here with little Mitzi. And she doesn't care about me because she's got a treat she's been waiting for. There you go. <laughs> I'm bribing her love. Um, okay. So, hi everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. Yes, I cannot imagine life without her now. Um, the cats can. The cats can absolutely imagine life without her. But um, so um, we're while we're waiting for people to join on, um, let's take a moment and talk. And listen, if at any point you guys have questions that you want to share, you know, or ask me or any thoughts or issues or concerns, feel welcome to share them. Uh, I wanted to tell you about an experience I had after our class last week. Um, you know, and any of you who teach, I know you can relate to what I'm about to say. When I teach a class, I open up really big and I extend the energy that flows through me to everyone connected to the class, everyone who's who's taking the class. So, sorry, it's... The uneven neckline was driving me a little nuts. <laughs> so um, when I closed off, you know, that was a very intense class last week. And I do, you know, look forward to hearing if any of you practiced at all during the week or tried any techniques or if you had any experiences, please feel welcome to share, especially if, you know, you had anything where you could use a little help on how to make it better for you in any way or you know, in a more preferable situation for you. Um, so when I ended the class, I, you know, disconnected my connection with all of you. Although the love, of course, remains. We had that beautiful love mandala that we, that we made. Um, hi, Joyce. Hi, Kathleen. <laughs> But I was open, and so I took advantage of being so open to really connect with my non-physical mentors and guides and guardians and teachers, uh, and I fell asleep like that. So I had crazy dreams last Wednesday, like disturbing Luckily, I'm used to having disturbing dreams, but they took me super high and super far away and were like taking advantage of this situation to cram as much information as possible to help with this process and, um, you know, with work that many of us are doing to try to help heal our planet and help the planet evolve. When I woke up last Thursday, I was in agony. Hi, Debbie. I was, I had a migraine, like, like giants wearing steel toed boots had been kicking my head and my neck. I, I mean, of course, a little meditation and a cup of coffee. I was fine. Um, I am very familiar. Um, hi, Sho is it Shoni or Shone or Shona? Um, that's the problem with meeting people, you know, online. I, when I meet in person, I don't know how to spell names. And when I meet online, I don't know how to pronounce names. So I apologize if I'm butchering anyone's beautiful name with a greeting. Um, so I'm, I'm so familiar, you know, I've had migraines my whole life, like almost every morning, not so much more, but through most of my life, I woke up with migraines and I've had thousands of migraines in my life. I've been hospitalized with migraines and my whole life, no one knew why. Why was this child having so many migraines? And I had a poor immune system. I was sick all the time. Um, and then, uh, oh, hi, Caroline. Oh my God, so nice to see you. <laughs> um, and then 
later, it's of course I'm an empath. So I was, I had like garbage immune system. I was absorbing everything. And the migraines came from doing so much woo up here connection and, um, and then waking up and getting slammed in my body hard. So I, um, uh, hi, Tamara. <laughs> I, I learned, um, thank you, Tamara. I appreciate the love and it goes back out to you and to all of you. Um, I've actually studied specific techniques with different indigenous healers to um, not be affected in this way. And it's a tech, you know, these are things that I've been wanting to teach, but they're a little more advanced. So I'm so excited with the class we're doing today and our Wednesday night classes and our Saturday morning classes. You guys, if you stick with me on this, you will get all the basic skill sets you need to be able to really take these more, um, hi Jacinta, to take these more advanced classes. Like I can teach you guys how to heal yourself on health issues and you know things like that. Uh, what was it, a couple of years ago, I went in for my annual physical and um oh it was right before trump took office and so i wanted to get in and get everything taken care of before he became president because i knew he would screw over our um health benefits which he did and um so i went in and i had my doctor do everything and she went ahead and did everything because i was not the only person asking that and uh, they did total blood work panel. And then a week later, a few days later, a week later, I started getting the phone calls from my doctor, my OBGYN, um, you know, everyone, because when my blood work came in, it said I was positive for like every disease and illness on the planet. And um, then, so they were calling and saying I had hep C, I had a kidney issue, I had liver cancer, I had everything but STDs. Um, if, if it was like a disease, I was testing positive for it. Oh, not mad cow disease. Um, so I was like trying not to be freaked out and I learned, and then they called me back a few days later and I was negative for everything. I was like, okay, first of all, take hepatitis C, hep C. That one came up positive. And I said, you told me I tested positive for it. And the only way to overcome hepatitis C is to, you know, take the medication. And I've never taken the medication, but now you're telling me I'm negative for it. And she said, yes, when they do the blood work, they're testing for um, tags, you know, markers for the issue, which is a very basic, simple process. And if you test positive for the marker, then they take the same blood and they run it through again for the more uh, extensive blood test. And she said, as far as I can tell, you had hepatitis C and the very moment you got it, you were cured of it because there was zero, you know, it does liver damage. It does all, she's like zero impact on your body. And I was like, okay, and what about, like we went through every single issue that she said I had tested positive. And she said, as far as I can tell, as soon as you got it, you spontaneously healed of it. So um, uh, then I checked with, people and this is where like mad cow disease uh i had a few clients who had helped their spouses through it and a few other issues where they ended up testing positive for it on the marker but then were negative in the blood work so i think when you're a very empathic person and you're around people and you're helping and caregiving for them you imprint on what they have but you don't necessarily catch it um however as a child i was sick all the time i caught everything in and out of hospitals and doctors offices and just you know really really sick so i have learned um 
this is not because of my physical body, it's because of my energetic connections. Um, and I mention this because if we do well with this class and then after this class is over, um, Carlos the medium uh, in, what is this, in two weeks will join us Wednesday to do, I think a numerology class. And then um, I'll start teaching channeling on Wednesday nights. And then Saturday mornings, of course, we're doing building your energy grid. So if we get all this stuff going, I can teach you guys like a lot of skills that I've spent a lifetime developing. And I'm, I'm very excited to do that. Um, and if you are wondering like, wait a minute, Benita's saying she got hepatitis C and spontaneously healed like, I never had hep C in my life, but obviously somehow I was being connected with and nurturing to someone who did. And if you're wondering how is that possible, just remember, you know, I teach spoon bending classes. And if you go to my website and sign up for my online school, I offer, I have like 20 free spoon bending classes that you can take the class absolutely for free um, and learn different techniques for spoon bending. Here's the reason I mention this, not to like boast about how cool I am. I can absorb illnesses and mangle silverware. It's because we can do anything if we 100% believe we can do it. All of these techniques we're learning are to help us get into alignment with 100% faith and belief. That's why we're doing all this. So, um, and then who knows what we can accomplish. Um, so for tonight's class, uh, if you didn't get the memo, don't worry. <laughs> we're gonna start with a bowl of water. I don't care if it's a soup bowl, a cereal bowl, a 20 gallon bowl, that might be a little unwieldy. A metal bowl, glass, plastic, ceramic, I don't care. It doesn't matter what size it is. It's just a basin or a bowl with water and some kind of powder. It can be coffee grinds, tea leaves. I have a little thing of allspice. We're going to sprinkle powder on the, not now, don't do it now, on the water. So you don't need more than like a half teaspoon, a teaspoon or a few shakes of whatever it can be. Coffee, powder, instant coffee, not so good. It would just melt coffee powder, ground coffee or tea leaves or uh, cornstarch or any kind of spice um, would work. And just like last week, a cup with water, it can be this much water, this much, doesn't matter. And um, a pendulum or a necklace, you know, it can be anything that can swing, anything that can swing. And um, so like the necklace I'm wearing, I use as a pendulum all the time. Sometimes I've even used my dog collar or an actual pendulum will work doesn't matter. These are the tools we're going to use tonight. If you don't have them in your hands yet, feel welcome to go and get them now. A cup, it can be a teacup, a whiskey shot glass, I don't know. It, it doesn't have to be see-through. So any kind of cup with water, a bowl with water, some sort of powder, and some sort of necklace or pendulum that you can swing. And uh, we'll have a couple of minutes while, if you don't have them yet, feel welcome to uh, go and get what you need. And um, while we're waiting, there's also, um, you know, you can use other ways of scrying. Like, as I said last week, my grandmother could look in a window pane and use that for scrying. Um, I have this beautiful snow globe that I like to look at. That, because it's like still and action, and it's like clear and fuzzy by its nature, you know, snow globes are awesome for this. Um, 
Well, this will sound weird. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have studied uh, with voodoo uh, practitioners before or people who do a lot of nature, nature magic, but um, I have a, a little raccoon skull that I have the entire raccoon skeleton here. I'm going to put it together someday. And no, I didn't murder this sweet little raccoon. I was um, out hiking and the, the bones were like there in the ground. And so I had a chat with the bones and they asked if they could come and help me with work. So we, we've been hanging out together for a while. And, um, but the thing is, this was a living being. The soul of this being has gone off to do other work. In fact, the soul of this raccoon is not completely reincarnated now, but the actual life of this raccoon, of this aspect of soul, and I are able to connect and it can talk with me. Because it's a living being, when I want to do scrying, I can get help from this raccoon and I'll connect with the raccoon and it makes the portal more powerful. First of all, this is an earth being. So it's immediately we're connected with the all of nature magic. And when I open my crown, the raccoon automatically opens. It's a really cool frequency. And then when I go and I do some scrying like in the bowl or my crystal ball or, you know, my water bottle, uh, which is filled with crystals and shungite at the bottom. With this little guy helping me, I get a whole new perspective. So for any of you who found that to be a little morose, or, oh, I did bleach this when it's clean and sanitary. <laughs> for those of you who find that to be morose or disgusting, I apologize. Um, but that's the thing, life, our physical life is temporary. It's a dream. Before you came to life, your guides and your mentors and your guardian angel helped you design your life. And you're now sort of um, living the life you design kind of-ish. Uh, sort of imagine an improv group that has like semi-scripted, you have certain point plot points you need to get to at certain point times, but sometimes you go way off script. And then when you die, you return to your soul and that's like where it's really happening so everything we're doing here not only did we design it but we have the ability to override our design we have the ability to like make things however we want it just like a lucid dream we're living our own lucid dream and these scrying tools are one way to help us with that um okay <laughs> so let's get ready um and thank you all cinnamon awesome cinnamon is great to sprinkle on the water um first of all cinnamon is a powerful powerful spice it is um uh so awesome okay um We are going to, looking at the time, we will do the, the grounding and we're going to let our energy, imagine your energy like an hourglass. So your, um, your body is like in the center of this hourglass with your root chakra extending out deep and wide. And, excuse me, little dog run outside. There you go. I'm taking advantage of the uh, the quarantine to go through all my clothing, and that's clothing I need to move into storage. <laughs> I was trying to hide it with the uh, the mirror. <laughs> um, so imagine your root chakra goes wide, like the bottom of your hourglass, and deep into earth, which gives you a wonderful structure of stability. And then your crown chakra you send up wide and high, so that 
supported by this very stable and powerful root chakra, your crown chakra can go up even higher than normal and possibly wider if you want. But for receiving messages from divine, you usually want it up, you know, like high and focused. Um, and the Saturday classes are when we go over all of that exercises, learning how to do all of that really, really well. Um, and then we nestle someone that we trust. It can be someone you loved in life who has passed or your soul, your guardian angel, Archangel Michael, Jesus, some alien collective, whatever, whomever you want that you trust completely to go and nestle in the top of your crown chakra. So you know that you're very, very safe and protected. Um, for tonight, I'm also going to invite a uh, white light healing energy to flow down into us and around us so that um, every message we receive is pure. That way, you can fully trust what you get. Now, it's not really necessary to go to this extreme of self-protection. However, it is necessary that you 100% um, accept and value the message you get. So we put all of this protection around. First of all, it's nice. Who doesn't love pure white light you know, energy flowing through them and someone you love sending love down to you. Um, but it also means that when you start self-doubting, when you, you know, your little ego gets involved and you're like, oh no, I just made that up or whatever. You're like, no, this is real. I know it's real. And if you have any question like, oh my God, what if it's a, a demon trying to fake me out? You're like, no, it can't be because this is pure. I'm surrounded by purity. So you know, if a demon goes near purity and they touch it, they become pure and all of their demon energy falls away and they return to whom they were before they took choices that led them to demonhood. They return to their pure love state. So you know that you're completely protected. Um, and, oh, hi, Tim. I'm so glad you could join us. Um, so we're going to start with that grounding crown chakra, protection. And then um, last week we started working with our pendulum. Um, so we'll do a quick chat with our pendulum and bring the pendulum over the cup of water like we did last week. Um, this time we're not going to worry about the whole getting to know our pendulum thing. If you want to learn more about that, go, you know, go back to last week's class. This week we're going to do it a little different. Always greet your pendulum, ask your pendulum how they're doing, let them know you're happy to meet with them. Remember the pendulum, it's, you know, an inanimate object, but by conversing with your pendulum, you're conversing with the energy of the connection and um also it's just polite it, it's what you do you always treat your pendulum as though it's a friend who's helping you out and you're filled with gratitude and then when you open your crown you invite your energy to separate from your body and invite the divine energy to flow through you to the pendulum so when your pendulum swings, you always ask it when you greet it, like, which way is your yes? And it will go and then thank it. And then which is no, and it will go. Even if you work with a pendulum every day, you never know, like one day, maybe there's solar flares somewhere or a magnetic shift or who knows what. And your pendulum's like, oh no, today, this is yes. You know, and you're like, wow, I never had that before. Or you never know. So you always check with your pendulum. And then we're going to put the pendulum over the cup and with water. And again, it does not matter, you know, what kind of cup you have. 
as long as there's water in it. And you are going to ask, you'll have a conversation with a pendulum and let it swing over the water. You can be holding the water in your hand or you can have the water sitting on a table. Uh, so you'll ask a few questions and at this point we'll be quiet so you can chat with your pendulum. It doesn't matter if the pendulum, like some of the most powerful pendulum workers I know, their pendulum moves so subtly that I don't even see it moving. But they're getting the information in a download as much as by what the pendulum is saying. And there are others where the pendulum swings a lot. There are others where their arm is actually moving. And I'll say to them afterwards, so your arm was moving. They're like, yeah, I wasn't moving it. That's just what the energy was doing. I let the energy take control of my arm. So don't worry if your arm is moving, if your hand is moving, um, or if you're holding the pendulum and you're like, I think everyone else's pendulum is going big and mine's going tiny. Don't worry about it. Um, my pendulum behaves a little differently depending on what we're doing. So, um, and you may kind of freak out when you, when you say, I could swear my hand was not moving at all and that pendulum was swinging. Yeah, <laughs> that happens a lot. So we're going to open up and then you'll have a minute to chat with your pendulum over the water, let it swing over the water. We're doing this to get ourselves comfortable with receiving information. And then we'll put the pendulum down and just look in the water at this point the water is charged up from the energy of the pendulum and you just look in the water and if you want you know you can like tap the cup a little bit if you want the water to move a little but you want to be a little spaced out at this point your relationship with your cup of water is one of indirect connection you've been connecting with your pendulum and your pendulum's been connecting with the water. So as you go to the water, you wanna maintain that spaced out indirect kind of, like when you see something out of the corner of your eye sort of thing. And um, you can say any question, ask any question. You can ask for a good early in question is, is there anyone out there and I'll, I'll suggest this one for you all. Is there anyone out there who loves me and cares about my best, happiest, healthiest well being, who has a, the frequency of my soul and my guardian angel or more, who wants to come to me with purity, who would like to share a message with me? And then, like, you're looking at the water, spaced out. You might see a vision in the water, or you might feel like someone's talking to you in your ear or in the back of your head, or you might get a download of information. It may feel like you got like a whole five hours of conversation downloaded at once, or it may be a childhood memory shows up. Like when we were scrying last week and I was looking into it, my grandmother came. And we were in my grandparents' house. My grandparents were both there. And my grandmother reached over and took my hand, took me outside to their farm. And then we got in her car. We went for a drive. And then next thing I knew, we had driven to the place where she wanted to. It was another dimension. And she had stuff she wanted to share with me uh, that was not earthly, this life stuff. Um, so whatever you're getting, just go with it. If it gets weird, that's okay. Um, sometimes the messages you get are symbolic. Sometimes it's sort of like in a dream state. Sometimes it's very, very literal, but it's just taking you to levels of connection that you have not yet experienced in this lifetime. Um, okay, and then we'll take a little break, catch our breath, and then we'll move on to the basin. All right, so, <laughs> okay, everyone, give your bodies permission to relax. For the rest of this experience, 
you do not need to control or manage your body or any aspect of what's going to happen at all. Give yourself permission to do things and to receive things, but do not manage it. If at any point you are feeling any level of pain or pressure or queasiness or vertigo or anything like that anywhere in your body, give it permission for the energy to flow. Give the energy permission to flow. Give your body permission to relax. The pain comes from usually one of two reasons. One, you're resisting what's coming in, which is very natural. Like if you're standing there and someone comes and taps you on the shoulder and you're like startled, it's very natural to resist. Um, and the other one is like if the pain is very deep inside, it could be there's an issue that you're working on in this life. Um, and it's letting you know like, hey, you have pain in your heart or hey, you have pain in your shoulder or hey, you have pain in your belly acknowledge it thank it for being one with you give it permission to relax and receive love and say you know what let's chat later after class feel welcome to come back and visit with me um but always gratitude if you're feeling pain give it gratitude that somewhere in your body there's a part of you that loves you so much it's trying to protect you from probably a memory that's no longer even relevant or um, a self-esteem issue that really you're best to release um, because usually it's things that are like a little oppressive and you guys are awesome so you don't need that okay so give your body permission to relax give your feet permission to relax and invite all the energy that's in your body to just relax and flow out of your body, down your legs, down through your feet, deep into earth. And as this energy is flowing out of your body, you feel your root chakra very naturally relaxing and expanding outward like an upside down cone, expanding outward, deeper, wider, supporting you with this beautiful base of flowing energy. And as your body relaxes and all that energy flows through you into earth, You'll notice naturally, instinctively, the top of your head is ready to feel open, light and airy. And beautiful divine energy flows in through the top of your head, mixing around in your mind, flowing down through your neck, your shoulders, down through your body, down through your legs, through your feet, deep into earth. And you'll find your root chakra spreads deep and wide. Your crown chakra very naturally opens up high, little wide, beautifully supported by your energetically flowing root chakra. If you feel any pain or pressure on your head, acknowledge it, thank it, for being connected with you and give it permission to resolve itself and give your body permission to receive all of this beautiful divine energy flowing in through your crown chakra, through the top of your head, 
through your body, deep into earth, where Gaia, Pacamama, Mother Earth is there with her arms spread wide, absorbing all of the energy that's flowing through, transmuting it to the highest form of love, sending it off to all of your nature, brothers and sisters of the planet. Bring your attention to your crown chakra. Invite your crown chakra to be up as high as it's comfortable. It may feel comfortable close to your head. It may feel comfortable with it opening very high up. Wherever it is comfortable, and you are comfortable maintaining your conscious awareness and comfortable supporting your crown chakra. This is the perfect place for you right now. Your crown chakra beautifully supported by your expansive, energized root chakra. Feel all of the sacred divine energy flowing in through your crown chakra into your head and your body. Invite someone you love and trust completely. You may have someone in your mind already. Or maybe you just say, if there is anyone out there who loves and cares about me and my healthiest, happiest state of well-being, who wishes to protect my energy and my state of joy, my state of health, I call to you to nestle in the crown chakra the top of my crown chakra and act as the gatekeeper so that anything and anyone who wishes to come and connect with me must meet with your approval first. I require whoever this is has a frequency of love that is as pure as mine and is accepted by my guardian angel, could be your guardian angel. So connect with this beautiful, loving, caring being. I invite them to nestle in the top of your crown chakra. And to allow loving blessing energy to flow into you and only the most beautiful of messages And now we will call upon the white light energy. You may see it as angelic energy. You may see it as like selenite energy. It may be glowing. It may be cloudy. White light energy flowing down and surrounding us so that each of us is protected by the purest white energy. Your gatekeeper friend, at the top of your crown chakra, is very comfortable managing and directing the white light energy to keep it flowing around you 
so that you are absolutely protected. Without question, every message you receive is going to be pure and filled with love. Beautiful. Okay. So take your pendulum or necklace and your cup with water. Greet your pendulum. Hello, pendulum. How are you tonight? Oh. And give your pendulum the ability to respond to you. You may actually hear the pendulum speaking to you in your voice, in your head. That's normal. Okay, pendulum, thank you for joining me tonight. We're going to have fun. Can you please show me what is your yes? Thank you, Pendulum. And now, can you please show me what is your no? Thank you, Pendulum. And when you are sending loving healing to someone, what do you do tonight? Lovely. Thank you. And when you are removing pain or distress, what do you do? Thank you. One of the nice things about talking with your pendulum is it kind of gets you out of your own head and it makes you forget like what you're doing, which is what we want to do. We, we want to, we set everything up. We don't need to be technical anymore. So take a moment, breathe. You have your gatekeeper. You're surrounded by white light healing energy. Love, divine love is flowing down through your body. With the help of your pendulum over your cup of water, feel welcome to invite anyone who wishes, who loves you, cares about your well being, who wishes to send a loving message to you, to assist you with your pendulum work. We'll have one minute where we're quiet. And you can ask your pendulum any questions at all and let it answer while sending energy into your cup. You're assisted by someone who loves you, who in a little while will start speaking with you as well, or maybe now. One minute. Beautiful work, everyone. And now ask your pendulum to send some healing, loving energy into your cup.
Thank you, Pendulum. And then thank you for working with us. Thank you, Pendulum, for working with you. Put it away. And then take your cup. If it's clear plastic, you can look through it any way you want. If it's not clear, then look through the top at the water. You can hold it in your hands or put it on the table. And even if it's on the table, you can like tap it on occasion if you want to like. And look through it. Your water has now been really charged up. It's got a lot of energy from, you know, the pendulum. So take a moment and look at your water in a very sideways kind of like, oh, I didn't see you out of the corner of my eye kind of spaced out way. And ask someone who has messages to come through and share them with you. However you receive the message, acknowledge it and accept it. So we'll be quiet for two minutes. Remember to keep the energy flowing through your crown chakra open and accepting. Ask it to flow into your cup and keep on with your spaced out, disconnected connection. You may see like clouds forming in your cup, or you may just feel it becoming very pure, but invite the white light energy to fill your cup let your eyes be spaced out. You'll definitely want to be holding your cup for this, even if it's on the table, because you're surrounded by white light energy as well. So ask your gatekeeper to flow white light energy directly into your cup. And then see what message arrives.
Okay. Give yourself a moment to come back. It's okay to be a little spacey and keep your connection, but we're going to disconnect from visions from the glass. In fact, drink a little of the water. And set your cup aside. Catch your breath. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing okay. Um, if you have any questions or anything, you're welcome to ask. Allow yourself to return mentally to this class. One of the things about scrying, being a seer, a medium, is the ability to go in and out at will. If you're receiving a message and that message is over, you learn to disconnect completely and that so that you can then fully reconnect cleanly with the next message. Certainly, uh, those of us who do this professionally, it's vitally important that we do full cleansing not just between each client, but between each kind of message we're giving. You know, if I'm with a client and I'm receiving five different messages and each one is a different kind of person or an issue, it's important that I keep them all separate so that my client can get free information from each one. You know, if they have a Suppose a client comes in and there's a grandmother who passed, who's just there with benevolent love. So we have this wonderful feeling when I pull back, maybe the next one is um, an uncle who died with some karmic issues left hanging that he needs some help with. And he's connecting from a place of pain. I need to make sure I'm disconnected from the grandmother not necessarily me, I can be connected, but the message, the frequency, the energy for the uncle must be complete on its own. So I can go back and forth between them even like, okay, so your grandmother's here and she's saying this, your uncle's here, he needs that. He's actually dependent upon your grandmother to help him through with something. Um, but he's in a lot of pain and he's asking for you to go to the park and have a picnic and um, look at butterflies because he needs to be with you while you do that to experience the joy you're having to release some sort of pain that he's carrying with him. So like sometimes when you're doing messages, you're jumping back and forth between people. You need to be 100% in alignment with whoever you're giving a message through. Suppose I didn't do that. I said, well, your uncle's here and he's actually really happy, full of benevolent love. And the person will go, well, that's not right. My uncle was like very sad when he died. Um, you know, like, but I see him here. I see him here. What's wrong? So as you're learning, give yourself the ability to have these moments where you're like, wait a minute, I don't understand what's wrong. And by fully being able to engage, you know, um, I can be like, okay, here's a person who passed and oh, now an angel came in. Okay, oh, one of your past lives is here. You get to know the unique frequency of each kind of being and um, and why they would be there. So bring yourself back, <laughs> but you still keep the connection. We're going to bring our bowls of water now and whatever powder I have allspice, um, uh, tea leaves, coffee grinds, a spice, whatever, to just sprinkle a little on. Oh my God, that was almost a disaster. And um, so here's the thing. Bowls of water were like one of the original ways that people did scrying because you could go to the river, put a little water in a bowl, spin it around, and you get a little hypnotized while you're doing it, and that's when the information flows. So it's a little bit like the pendulum concept, right? So the basin of water, even before 
even before crystal balls were a thing. The basin of water was one of the earliest ways of scrying. Whenever you use this, you're connecting with the energy of every person who has done this through, you know, thousands and thousands of years. It's a wonderful way of asking for the power of the ancient scryers to support you with the work you're doing through your root chakra, really, because you're asking for their energetic imprint on our planet to support your work. Um, I mean, of course, with the crystal ball, you can do that. But when you have something that's so ancient and so original, where in the old days, someone would go with a basin, put in the water, and they call to the gods to come and support them as they like are there with their basin, going into a trance-like state, and the visions rise up through the basin to them. And then they come out with, you know, with uh, visions of the future or like, you know, messages, and it's very, very powerful. So we are going to do that now. Um, allow yourself to return to your state where um, your root chakra was deep and expanded wide, your crown chakra was tall up, the energy is flowing in and through Gaia, Mother Earth, Pacamama is there beneath you, absorbing your energy and supporting you with the work you're doing. Your gatekeeper who loves you dearly is at the top of your root chakra, supporting you watching over you, protecting you, and surrounding you with beautiful white light healing energy. Invite the energy to flow through. If you feel any sort of queasiness or aches or anything, invite the energy to flow. Acknowledge the discomfort and give it permission to relax, release and have that area fill with love as the energy flows. Take your basin. You can hold it in your hands or have it sitting on the table. And just let your eyes space out looking at it the same way you did with the cup. The energy is flowing through you. As you connect with your basin, the energy is flowing in through the top of your head, through your body into earth. We think of all the scryers before us for thousands and thousands of years back. We think of the people long ago who would take their bowls, their basins to the water, fill them, allow their bodies to empty as their bodies are then filled with messages, messages from the divine, from those who passed, from animals, from the planet, guidance. We call to all these ancient soothsayers, prophets, seers, to come and join us, support us with their 
web of ancient knowledge and skills. Now ask someone you love who has passed to support you from beyond. You're getting so much support in all directions. Then open your mind and say, whom out there who loves me and cares about my well-being wishes to share a message with me? Give yourself a moment just to receive. If there's someone in particular you would like to connect with, Feel welcome to ask for them. Now take your powder and just sprinkle a little across the top. It doesn't take much, however much you want. You're learning. And what you normally do is you spin the bowl a little bit. So I'm going to do on the table because it spins better. Some people put their finger in and just sort of dangle it around a little. Let, and if you feel like you didn't put enough powder, put a little more. And allow, with your eyes very spaced out, sort of like picking out shapes in the clouds, or any of you who've done smoke billets, just allow some shapes or messages or visions to rise up or to form in it. If you have someone who's chatting with you from beyond, ask them to use this with you or you can just see what comes up and let it then flesh out into a full message. You may get weird random words suddenly form in the back of your mind. That's okay, invite them. I heard this, what's that mean?
Okay. That's excellent. So you now have a scrying bowl. Give yourself a moment to come back and sort of give gratitude to those who supported you with your work. You can take a moment to personally thank each one, be it the ancients who scribed before us, Gaia, your gatekeeper, your guides, guardians, everyone or anyone who spoke with you. Give thanks. invite the connections to return the white light energy your gatekeeper invite your crown chakra and your root chakra to return to space and invite the energy to flow through you but also flow around you you know you Relax and loosen things up a little bit. If you're feeling any pressure, any pain in your head as we're releasing, if you're welcome, just kind of massage the top of your head a little bit. And give yourself insta bed head. And, um, you know, know that you're like getting used to pressures sort of and energy it's like you can expand your crown chakra a little bit if it came too tight which is part of my morning migraines eh? and you may want to like stamp your feet a little bit just like oh get energy back in your body <laughs> there we go here's the thing if you want to reconnect to this now you know how if after we are done here you want to like get back into it you'll get to the point where as soon as you say okay my feet you can relax you're like oh okay i'm all set because you know um our bodies know oh i know where this is going and you're automatically where you want to be for scrying um so i hope i hope that was good experience for you guys. I got some pretty potent messages and got to connect with someone, a couple of someones. So I hope you guys had something good. I do encourage you to practice because um, that's how it gets better and better. I will tell you sometimes as you're practicing it, um, Like as when I was learning mediumship skills, um, a lot of times I was getting messages from people, I don't know who they are, uh, but they just wanted someone to hear them. So you may get a lot of random souls just coming up and saying, oh, hey, you're open. Let me tell you about my life or let me tell you about an issue or let me tell, you know, complain about someone or whatever. So be ready for rando spirits to come and chat with you we protected ourselves so you don't have to worry about anyone coming in aggressing upon you but i've learned a lot of interesting history and i've met a lot of interesting lives by being open to that um and it's weird because after they share their lives with you it is amazing how much you'll remember you're like you know like you saw a movie that was profoundly moving and 20 years later you still recall the details of it um so that's one of the ways that you know for sure you had oh, my pleasure kathleen um that's one of the ways you know for sure you had a connection because if you made it up 
you wouldn't have that like level of detail flooding into you and you wouldn't hold on to it that way. So that's a, a nice affirmation. Um, so if anyone has any questions or anything you want to share, even after class is over, feel welcome to. Um, now I'll tell you next, oh, people have been asking me about resources and this book, Crystal Ball Gazing by Uma Sil Silby. I found this to be a very useful book. I've read it numerous times and every time I read, I'm like, oh, I don't remember that. There's a lot of info in here and it's easy reading. It's, um, you know, it talks about like working with a smoky quartz and working with different crystals, Chinese fluorite. And um, it's, it's a, you know, pretty straightforward, easy book. I loved it. And there are other comparable books. It just happens to be the one that was in the bookstore. Like, I don't know how long ago when I bought this. Um, and so it's the one I got and I liked it. So I didn't really have to look that much further. Uh, this book, The Art of Black Mirror Scrying um, by Rosemary Ellen Guiley. This is some of what we're going to work on next week. I got this book by accident because um, I do uh, the Toltec style of uh, working with the black mirror, which is an obsidian, polished obsidian. And it's um, the, the, uh, the Mexican style working with Toltecs, ancient Toltec wisdom and i'm trained in that so i got this one thinking it would be dream time toltec dream time work with the black obsidian mirror and it's not it's really cool um it's you build like a black box like imagine your say your bedroom closet fully enclosed and you put a mirror there and you space out in a semi-dark just spacing out at a full mirror um so it's really cool and next week we're going to do a little practicing of this next week it doesn't matter if you have like a big mirror or a small hand mirror um i'm going to pull some of the toltec methods for dream time and some of this and which is um and we're going to, the thing is like, if you're looking at a mirror, you see a reflection, but then if you dim the lights, the reflection, you only see like a little of the outline of the reflection. Then you invite the spirit to come in and you're looking suddenly you're like, oh my God, I see my grandfather or, oh my God, it's a sea of angels or, you know. So it, it's really cool. We're going to play with this next week, but we'll also do the Toltec. We're going to work with mirrors next week. It doesn't matter what mirrors you have. And um, if you are using your bathroom mirror and you're going to watch us from your bathroom, that's okay too. This week, I will photograph me with mirrors in different situations so that you can have some examples of what would work well for you. It's best if the lights are dim while you're doing this black mirror work. When you're doing Toltec, it doesn't matter because you're just spaced out staring in your hands. Um, but um, it's really, really cool. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. I got to tell you, this is such a personal uh, program for me to teach it online where i have no idea how anyone's doing is a little um disconcerting for me because for all i know you guys are like what is benita talking about but this is really powerful stuff and really it comes down to letting go of yourself and inviting non-physical 
to connect with you and share wisdom with you and then accepting it a hundred percent. So, um, so thank you guys. Thank you. And, um, you know, and this is really the first step towards expanding your life to be more and more and more, you know, and let's see. Oh my God, that is so cool. You guys, thank you. I, it's nice getting your messages. So please feel welcome to share messages on your experience. Um, I can tell you, I got, um, for those of you who are going to be connecting more and more with non-physical, I got a very powerful message. Um, the ancient magics are returning and the ancient gods are returning. I, um, when I, after I put down my pendulum and I was just looking in the glass all spaced out and the next thing I knew it was like three glasses because my eyes were crossing. I first, I heard a voice and it was like a booming male voice, like shabu, very loud. And I was like, what? And, um, but I accepted it and I was expecting to see something and said, I heard something. But then the visions, you know, the more you accept, the more it opens up, the visions came. And it was like the old Norse gods and all the old gods are coming back. They're all returning. Uh, the Norse gods were excited. They're like, Ragnarok is here. And I'm like, seriously? And they said, it's not about the end of days. It's about clearing all the debris so that true existence can come forward. And uh, I'm like, well, I don't want to be debris and I don't want my friends to be debris, but it's about getting everyone back to truth. So you may start seeing some ancient gods showing up, or you may be getting invitations to learn ancient wisdoms that have been lost through the ages. So all of this is a step for all of that to happen, which is very cool. I know people who do that and it is amazing. So um, if you do get freaked out, feel welcome to contact me. And if you do um, start getting invitations by ancient gods to learn ancient skills, yeah. You know, so long as you um, have the white light energy, and if you have questions, ask them to connect, come through the white light energy and connect with you or ask your guardians to look out for you or ask God to shine love upon you or source, you know, whichever you call or cosmic love. If you are flowing with love, then any that connect with you can only connect through love. Just remember that. Um, and if you join us on Saturdays, you will learn how to be always and only flowing with the highest frequency of love. Um, so thank you guys. Thank you. And that is so cool. You saw a lion turn into a little boy. That is awesome. That's awesome. And thank you guys so much. So listen, have a wonderful night. Stay safe stay healthy. Remember, it's about going together with purity and common sense. Take care of yourselves on all levels. I love you. Love yourselves. It's all about love. And, you know, I hope to see you all Saturday morning, if not before. Thank you, guys. Bye.